Microsoft Azure, or Azure as they often pronounce it, is Microsoft's cloud service. So you sign up by going to portal.azure.com. The full URL will be in the notes. Sign up with your university address and then you'll get to something like this interface. I say something like this interface because it shows the recent resources you've used in the middle. So each time you use a resource, this bit in the middle will change. Everything on Azure is treated as a resource. And we'll go through some of these as the course goes on. What we're most interested in doing right now is setting up a virtual machine. And uh, so you'll see if we go here, we go to the home key, press create a resource or press create a resource. We're just going to set up an Ubuntu server. And I'm going to take you through the menu options for that and hopefully point out some bits which are useful. So Ubuntu is a leading Linux distribution. We tend to use Linux on the internet very often and certainly in the big data area simply because of the license key uh, fee issue. So if we started Windows host, you had a lot of Windows hosts, you'll be paying license fees. If you uh, are using Linux servers, there aren't any license fees. So we've got this basic um, menu here. You can see there are different tabs across the top and we go through these step by step. This is our account. You might have more than one account if you signed up using your university address. So you don't need to use a credit card. If you've used a credit card, well, that's, uh, that's not uh, necessary. And we want to create a resource group. So everything in Azure is treated as going a resource, as I said, and it goes into a resource group. So if I call this just RG1, and I say, OK, unless I've already used RG1. We have to give our virtual server a name. So I'll call this KF7032. And I'll call it X. Because I've already used some of the letters. The next item in the menu is the region where we're going to be building this service. Now, it's set by default to be the UK. The problem with the UK is it is actually an expensive region and a premium service, which is fine if we didn't want to let our data go uh, overseas or whatever. Uh, and so if you look at the costing situation, generally I tend to go for US East. Uh, there was a training course recently and the guy said he goes for Asia Pacific. Uh, Time-wise, if this makes a difference, I can't tell. So I'm just going to stick with US East, but as a research project, you could check out what the different fees are. There are options on the availability and you can see there are a number of possible, well, this is the machine we're choosing, an Ubuntu server version 20. The long LTS is long-term support. So this is a very standard virtual machine. There are lots of other images we could use but Ubuntu is well supported. As I said, it's long-term support. As usual, any item which is starred, you must fill in. And we want to see the possible machines. So this is remembering my previous default, which is two CPUs, four gig of memory. If you actually look at the pricing, it is about two or three cents an hour and that is what we'll be running hourly we're not planning to run this for months at a time you've got a hundred dollars credit and if you just run this server full time you'll use your credit up really quickly so this is a big issue here so if you do want to change the size of the machine you click on view all sizes you'll see there are different sizes and costs which it's sort of calculating and they vary down from £5.66 
which would get you a one gig of RAM machine, which would be useful for file transfer and things like that. And there are pages of these that go up to uh, hundreds of dollars. And all you need to do to choose one particular one, well, we've already got this chosen, but just to show you the principle. Uh, and they're given code words like A, B, D, depending on what they are. This is a general purpose machine. You click the machine type, say select. Now it looks as though you could be the administrator and you could sign up with a password. It is a very bad idea to do this. Please use SSH key. Um, we're going to go through what an SSH key is. Passwords are extremely insecure. If you have your password stolen from a machine which is on your site, something happens, you can always take the plug out. If you lose password control on a cloud server, basically you can't get things back. So security is much more important. Sign up for a key, we're going to work with that. Let's look at the disk allocation. So, one thing to notice with Azure is, or Asia, is that many services, they will try and offer you a premium version. Now, you don't need a premium SSD because you're going to be working with small amounts of data, you're using it for uh, dev and test, that is development. So even a standard SSD you won't notice any difference. Let's just choose an HDD. Leave this set as defaults. Next is the networking issue. It will automatically create networks for us. We don't need to worry about that. It will create an IP address for us. By default, it creates access to port 22. Port 22 is secure shell. We'll be using that for everything. The warning means that actually you could limit this port 22 to be only your home IP address, uh, which is a really good idea, except if you're going to move around, work from home sometimes, work from somewhere else, you're accessing through the internet, you'll find that overly restrictive. Uh, so just leave that as port 22 open to the world. We don't probably need any more of these other issues. We don't need backups. We don't need uh, whatever. And at this point, let's just check. We don't need any extensions. You just click review and create. Now this can take a few minutes. Um, well, it definitely does take a few minutes. It tells us that's going to cost uh, three UK pence an hour. So that means if you use it for three hours, it's going to cost you 10 pence. If you're not going to turn it off, it's going to eat into your credit. And we don't have extra credit. This account is a privilege um, given by Microsoft. The university doesn't supply this as part of your course. So we've got plenty of credit providing you manage it sensibly. So those are our defaults. It's got my name, phone number, etc., etc., uh, all set there. I say create. Now, this thing with the key is really important. It's going to download the private key, and we're going to come back to this later on. You only get one option to download this key. If you lose this key, you cannot access the virtual machine, uh, and that would mean uh, essentially that you have to um, delete it and start again. So we'll download the private key and then we'll give this a minute or two um, to... Uh, I'm just going to save that file automatically. And it says deployment is in progress. So we're going to come to back to that in a minute or two. What we're now going to work with is the private key and I'll show you how that's going to go.